Quarkus is awesome. Yeah, you already know that. But today we use Quarkus to create a small user service that will persist in fat users. For that, we will be using the Kotlin language and the brand new extension that provides support for Panache and Kotlin. If you remember in the past, using Kotlin with Panache was a little bit tricky, but this new extension solves a bunch of problems by having a companion object that provides some stat methods, for example, the find by ID. I cannot wait to show how cool is to do that. Let's begin by creating our Quarkus project. We have some dependencies that we need to add to the project. Uh, so we need to add the Kotlin dependence. So our project will be ready to the Kotlin language instead of Java. Uh, the rest is a JSONB processor. So it's uh, useful to JSON processing in the endpoints. Uh, the Quarkus Hibernate Panache Kotlin version. So we have two different uh, Panache extensions. One extension works for Java, another for Kotlin. We need Kotlin and uh, the JDBC PostgreSQL in order to create data sources and connect to a PostgreSQL database. As we already know, uh, it will make some questions. What is my group ID? Is create and the direct thread ID will be user service. The version snapshot, yes, I want to create a REST resource, user resource answering the path user. Okay, we can see that our extensions were added, so we are fine on that. We can go to the project and run a compile to see if it's working as we expect. It's success, so since is everything working, we are good to move forward to IntelliJ. So the project that the Maven plugin created is pretty simple. Our first step is to add some configurations here in the application properties in order to connect our Quark service to a PostgreSQL database running on my local host that has a user service database uh, that connects with username and password as user service as well. So this is the configuration that we need to connect on that. And also I have here a Hibernate configuration that is drop and create. What it does is when deploys my Quarikus service, it will drop and create on the database. This is only for testing purposes. We should not have it in production because, I mean, nobody wants to delete everything that we have in the database every time that deploy the application. Okay, the next step is to create a Kotlin class that we will call user. The user class will be our JPA entity that reflects on the user table on the database. Okay, I have a few properties here. Uh, first of all, we need the ID that will be a string. We will be using the universal unique ID here. I also need the email of the user and also a status that is a anon that we will create here. The status can be active and inactive. Okay, so uh, this is the basic object that we need right now. The next step is to add the common JPA annotations that we are very used to. So we need to add the entity one and we need to add the table one. Since we are using a table that we will call user and PostgreSQL also have a user keyword, we need to um, put user between quotes here 
in order to be able to create a table called user. Okay, uh, user, table user, that's fine for now. Now I need to add the annotations to the fields. So the ID, every JPA entity needs a primary key. So the field ID will be our primary key. Uh, email is a column. ID is also a column and status is also a column. Since we are using a enum here, we need to say to JPA to persist the string representation of each value of the enum. So for that, we have the annotation enumerated that has a type here, a string. Uh, almost done with annotations. We have uh, a ID that is a string. We want to use the universal unique ID here. So for that, we need to use the uh, generator from the Hibernate API. Another step that you need to take in this JPA entity is to extend user using the Panache entity base class. The idea of using Panache is that we are able to use the active record pattern in our entities. The active record is something that is new for Java engineers, but in other languages, for example, Ruby is pretty common. Uh, active record is the pattern that provides in the entity class, the class that represents the table entity, the methods to change its own state and to fetch data. So when we have Panache entity base, extended on our class, we will be able to access, for example, the method persist that will insert a, a record on the database by using the values that we have in our uh, user entity. The difference of having a punish with Java and having punish with Kotlin is Kotlin uh, handles static access to the class members uh, differently that we, we are doing with Java. So to, in order to access methods, for example, defined by D, that is a static method to the entity, we need to add a companion object and extend panache companion as passing as argument to the generic fields, the entity and the type of the ID we can leave it empty for now. So our entity is ready. The next step is to create some endpoints that will provide a persist and fetch uh, methods to the web. So we already have the user resource class here. I will delete this hello method. We don't want to, to use that. The first method that I want to add is a method to create, to persist, to insert, whatever we want to call a, a new user in the database. So let's create a fun, call it save, and the argument will be user, okay? Uh, what it does is pretty simple, user let, let use the, uh, the function let from the Kotlin API that is, that keeps our code cleaner. And here I will call persist. That is the method from the uh, punish entity base class that we just added as extension. The user persist will we, we actually create a record on the database. It will return a response that is uh, with the status created, 201, and with the entity, the user that we just created. Uh, in order to expose this function uh, as a web endpoint, we need to add some notations, right? So this is this will be a post uh, HTTP verb uh, and consumes a media type application JSON. Also produces that, okay, uh, and 
this is a transactional method. So we are creating a new record on the database. So we need to add the transaction uh, annotation here in order to create a Java transaction uh, to insert the record on the database. Okay, so far so good. Uh, we already have the, the save method. Is all we, we need is that. The next, the next method that I want to add is a find by ID. So we will be able to create a user and to fetch the created user. So let's add a find by ID method. The argument will be a ID string. And we can use here a let again, response. Okay, uh, it will return a 200 code. And here, user find by the method as a static access by using that companion object that we just added to the NG, uh and passing the argument ID, that is a string. Okay, uh, we can call the build here. Uh, we also need to add the annotations, so it will be a get. Is it out need a also needs a path. And it uh, produces a JSON file. And as last but not least, we just need to add here the path param. And we are good. Um, Okay, we are ready to do the first testing on Postman. So let me deploy it to see it will, if it will work. So we have our service running on the 880 port. Let's go to Postman to run some testing over here. So in order to test our endpoints, uh, the first test I want to do is to create a user. So let me go to the 8080 slash user endpoint and I will send a JSON file. So the email wisely.fister gmail.com status active. Okay. Send it. And we have the 201 created status and the ID generated with success. I will also add another email and as an inactive user and also 201 created the ID here. Let me grab this ID that I can use here to test HTTP localhost user uh, and slash the ID send and our find by G endpoint is working fine as well. Okay, so now I want to fetch all users that I have in my database by its status and to find the user by its email as well. Uh, for that, we need to add two custom queries to our Panash entity class. So it's pretty simple, we have the companion object here that extends the Panache companion object. In order to create the custom queries that we do, that we need, we just need to add here two methods: fun find all by status. The parameter will be the status, right? And we can use the find method that receives two arguments the name of the property that we are fetching, status, and the value. And it has a list method that will return all entities that matches with this status. And we can add another one, find by uh, email, and change it to email, and here, here as well. But email, we just want to, to fetch one record because the email is supposed to be unique. So we have the first result method here that returns only one record. 
now we need to expose these functions as endpoints. So we have here find by email that we will call the find by email. We need to change that to email and instead of having a path parameter, we will have a query parameter. And here I will change the path to email. Okay. And the other method is uh, defined by status, find all by status. So find all by status. And here we will have status that will be a string. But we have an error here. So it says that I am requiring a status because the method here requires a status. But here I am passing a string. So I need to call the value of, of the status here to convert the string to the unknown representation of that value. Since we have that configuration that says that every time that we deploy our service, we drop the table. Uh, I just change the code and it will deploy it. So I need to create uh, another user here. So let's create again the Wesley Fischer uh, live.com, Wesley.Fischer gmail.com, and modusgrade.com. So we have three users, two actives and one inactive. Let me first find by email. Okay, uh, the same one, the ID 453. Yes, 453. So we are fetching the same one. Uh, I can change it to live to return the inactive one. Okay. And to return the other email. Okay, it's working fine. I want to test with status. Let's get every uh, email that is active. So we have a list here with Gmail and modus create, both actives and a inactive one. Okay, so our uh, crude applications, pretty simple, is working uh, as we expected using Kotlin and Panache and the active record style which means that we have the persist method being called in the user, the entity class, instead of having a repository class, another um, repository class that would persist and fetch data. The Quarkus Panache extension is pretty nice. I would suggest you to take a look on the documentations available on Quarkus.io. You will probably learn a lot by looking at that. Before you go there, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for us. Subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with our videos. Thank you for watching. See you soon and bye.